Oh, okay, we're back today reassembling this uh, 2007 Mercedes ML63 AMG engine. I got the heads back from the rebuilders. They, they were a little warped. They resurfaced them and checked all the valves. And I'm uh, reassembling the heads, the exhaust manifolds with new studs and gaskets. I don't like taking a chance on the exhaust studs. Replaced all the exhaust studs. Got all new lifters over here. All new gaskets, serpentine belt, belt tensioner, timing chain tensioner, oil filter housing gaskets and such. I prepped the block, ready for a reassembly here. I uh, used a very good scraper, very carefully to scrape the gasket surface, and a scotch bright pad to uh, clean the head surfaces. And we should be good to go. Wiped it down with brake cleaner. And we're going to reassemble the heads on here now. Okay, so the cylinder heads are right and left. This is the uh, left hand cylinder head, and you can see the head gasket is different. If we compare it to the right hand cylinder head, the gasket doesn't fit correctly. So it's pretty easy to tell which one is which. I thought I was going to have to check the part number, but it's obvious that this is for the left-hand cylinder head. I compared it to the original gasket and there's no missing holes. These are OEM gaskets, so they should be should be the correct ones. Okay, so here's the part number for the upgraded new style head bolts. And you can see that they're an E type bolt instead of a Torx bolt. Anyways, the new head bolts on each side, torque to yield bolts. The torque sequence starts in the center here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. At ten newton meters, then fifty newton meters, then ninety degrees, ninety degrees, and ninety degrees, all in sequence. And then the front bolts, these four and the two down inside here, down in there, are torqued to 20 Newton meters. So this, okay, so this is the exhaust cam phaser, and I've got this tool installed on here to um, align the teeth on that spring-loaded split gear, and then you lock it in place with a machine screw and a flat washer. Don't forget this washer, this wash, spacer washer must be in here. It, you got to be careful when you take this off because it might stick on the end of the camshaft. But account for all four of those on all four cam phasers. Once that's on there, then we can remove this this little tool and the teeth will stay aligned because it's a well, very close aligned anyway, it's a lot closer. That's uh, anti-rattle gear, spring-loaded torsional gear. Okay, so we're setting the cam timing now. So I've got the timing tools installed. There's a lock plate at the back across the two camshafts. This bar across the two flats of the cam. The cam sprockets with the Bolt holes lined up. Now I've got the lock bolts out. The marks on the uh, the part numbers have to be up on the gears. The fixture on the front, and make sure you've got the exhaust or intake side and the exhaust side. And over here, intake and exhaust. That lines up this camshaft sensor reluctors. Still a little bit of slop in there, but that's the only place it fits. So this one's locked, that one's locked. New bolts on the camshafts. You're not supposed to reuse them, they say. Now look up the bolt torque, torque the bolts, remove the fixtures, turn it over a couple times, and hopefully the fixtures fit back in again. Okay, I forgot to mention this is done with the cranks pulley at 40 degrees. I'm not sure if that's before or after TDC, but it's a 40 degree mark lined up with that pointer. 
the torque on the cam bolts is 84 foot pounds or 115 newton meter 115 newton meters so I timed it with the marks at 40 degrees the fixtures in place took the fixtures off turned the engine four revolutions so the timing mark is back on 40 and this fits right in and this plate locks right in and so does this one on this side and this one on this side so we should be good to reassemble this thing at that point what a what a procedure well cam solenoids on cam housings on cam covers on spark plugs in ready for the intake manifold well that's a nice sound just started it up fired up instantly got one connector here I can't figure out where it goes so I'm going to see if it sets any fault codes it doesn't look like it was plugged in as it was dirty so we're going to look a little closer after it runs for a while and see if any code set for missing sensors or anything I know the temp sensor which is down there is plugged in error solenoid is plugged in and there aren't too many places it could go but we'll figure it out. A little bit of valve train noise. Lifter's got to pump up. We're going to run it for a while until it gets hot and then pluck out the old oil and change the oil and filter again. Okay, so it turns out that connector goes to the bottom of the thermostat housing. It's about the only place it can reach. It's for a two disc thermostat heating element and a set of code for an open circuit. So we'll. Uh, I have to take a couple of small pieces off to get access to that. So it turns out that connector is on the very bottom of the thermostat housing. And you have to fish the wire down and underneath. You can just barely see the wire. I got it plugged in, but that was a challenge. And it's not common on North American vehicles to have electrically heated thermostats, but it is on European vehicles, so missed that connector. So now we can put this all back together again. I had to repair a broken vacuum line here. But we should be good to go. So it's all back together running. Just came back from a road test. And if you listen to this thing, it's got an intermittent misfire. It doesn't set any misfire codes. It's got new plugs. I did a cylinder cutout test and I can't tell what cylinder it is because it's intermittent like that. And there's no misfire counter availability on this thing. So we'll have to investigate that. Plus that little thermostat heater that I hadn't plugged in initially is, is plugged in now but it's still setting a fault code for it. So I'll have to cool, let it cool off. I know it's plugged in. I looked at it with a boroscope and it's plugged in. So there could be an open in the heater element in the thermostat housing. 